You could build this whole shed in one day. Joe kind of uh, did a real good job of doing the maths when he went to the store all by himself. Yeah. Ooh, roof, roof rafter. Is that a rafter? <laughs> <laughs> and a one and a two. And a one and a two and a one and two. All righty. Today's video, we're going to be setting up a 10 by 8 metal shed because somebody thinks I have too much stuff, like in my garage, on my back patio, back here, you know, and just around the house. Yeah, of course she thinks I have too much stuff. So, Patio Well sent me a 10 by eight shed that we're gonna be setting up today. The thing that's a little bit different about these compared to the ones at Home Depot and Lowe's is these ones have like a barn door style door and the Home Depot and Lowe's version have a sliding door. Now look at that, I got more crap over here. But we're gonna be setting that up right over here. So I need to move all this crap out and level the ground as best as I can. And then first thing we're gonna do is probably set up the base or the perimeter of the shed. And then we'll measure that, then we'll run to Lowe's and grab some wood so we can build a foundation or base, you know, a floor and all that kind of stuff. So I went to Lowe's and got all the wood, and I'll show you what we got here. So we got three 5 8 OSB, and these are the tongue and groove. They're the same price as the ones without. And we got 10 two by four treated wood. Then there's some eight foots right there. I got four of these flashing right here for the bottom, just in case I need them. They didn't have brown, but this is all I could find. And then I got nine of these pavers right here. These are 12 by 12 by I don't know, two inches or something like that. And then underneath, hopefully still there, I got some staking rods. And then back there, I got some one and a half inch screws and three inch screws. Those are all outdoor. Total bill with military discount, $287.88. All right, here we go. Got all my pavers kind of laid out exactly where I want and everything is, well, fairly level. I just took a two by four basically down each row and made it as level as I could. It's not perfect or anything like that, but I don't think it really needs to be. The next day. I'm here. You're here? Are you ready? Because you probably need a partner. I do need a partner. Okay. You ready? Let's do it. All right, inside the box comes with a manual right here, how to put it all together. Dusting and gloves. some dusting gloves for Lauren. Each box has its own little parts list and every single part has a number which also match up to here. We're gonna be looking for these numbers right here. Okay, that's what it's gonna refer to in the manual. Now we need a one and a two and a one and a two. <laughs> <laughs> and a one and a two. And a one and a two and a one and two. We got the base built. We wanted to build this first so we know the actual length of the perimeter so we can build our floor, which we will do next. You want to see what these look like so far? We just have two screws in each corner and there's a total of three screws in the middle. Trying to, you're trying to capture my great math? Yes. So, <laughs> I'm really glad Lauren is out here. She is, she's good at math. I am not good at math. We measured the outer perimeter of the the shed base or whatever, and it's a, a one, 102 and like three quarters. So we were gonna overhang our, our floor by a quarter inch basically all the way around. So we're getting over here trying to measure stuff and I keep yelling out the number 108 for some reason. So, 103. We're going with 103 this time. Oh my God. <laughs> Joe kind of uh, did a real good job of doing the maths when he went to the store all by himself. Yeah, I should have just got two more 10 foot long two by fours. So I got eight 10 foot and I got two eight feet. I should have just went with 10 10 feet. So if you're doing it, get 10, 10 feet. And they're literally like, what is it? Six inches short or seven inches short? <laughs> yeah, something like that. And we're scabbing together a two by four. Why do we have to use the word scab? You come up with a new word and we'll, we'll do that. Scab? I mean, what? Well, I'm sure there's like an actual word for it. Joe's over there talking to himself. 
Like you always complain about how long every project takes you and you say that it's due to filming, but I don't really believe you think it's all math. I think it's uh, probably a good 68% of it is math and like logistics <laughs> or something. <laughs> I mean, we could go with the old standby and just beep them together. Beep them. I like beepers. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> a 51 and three quarter beeper with a 51 and a half beeper. Yep. <laughs> Every time I think what? It's a whole process and it's like I should get this on camera. <laughs> How's it going? I don't know why you made me <laughs> do this part. Why are you putting these stakes in there? I don't know. There were some harebrained idea of yours. Cause they're, oh, apparently they're gonna like hold the shed in place if there's high winds, which it's not like these woods are going anywhere. Yeah. So I kind of feel like it's unnecessary. You do like to be a little extra, like a little bit more. And then a little bit more than that. A lot of times like let's do a little bit more and then just in case, let's go a few steps further. I don't know. Well, you're doing great. Yeah. I'm doing really well. All right, we have our floor and foundation all done. Took a lot longer than we anticipated. <laughs> we also put some of this flashing right here around all the edges, and that's basically to make like a drip edge so the water will go all the way down to the ground and hopefully not stay up there and get on this OSB wood right here. And we just put, you know, step one. <laughs> on there it's not screwed down or anything we're getting ready to go to step two or whatever it is in the book and i think that's the walls right lauren corner walls corner wall. so we're just going to follow along in the book and go from there i guess if we need to interject a note or something we'll interject right interjectors interjectors yeah we're gonna do this all it's right it's not gonna take very long it'll probably take like an hour what time is it it is 1 44. 1 44? yeah so i bet it's done by three All right, so you said we were going to be done at what time? Three. It's 3.05. Oh, I mean, no crap. All right, so what step are we on? 13? We're on 13. There's like 32 steps. I guess we won't be done at three. This is... 13 and 14 we might do, and then call it a day. Okay. Sound good to you? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> the next day next morning it was too hot yesterday so we had to quit so we left off by just putting on the frames right here all right i believe that was step 14 all right but so far i think it's going pretty good you definitely want to have two people one person maybe handing you all the screws and all the little washers that go on here that definitely helps out a lot if you're doing this by yourself it's going to take you a couple of days probably to do it if you had two people you could build it in one day i would imagine it's taking us longer because we you know did the whole flooring and that took a lot longer than we expected are you ready for another fun-filled adventure you need help here i am did you see that big spider whip i did yikes don't go over there you remember where we're at we're at step 15. what is step 15. i have no clue Ooh, roof roof rafter is that a rafter no. Roof pitches. All right, we'll go with roof pitches. Two beepers. Yep. And they come together Okay. Uh, with a B1. The B1. And the F2s. Okay. With the little vents. Oh, that's nice. So it doesn't get too hotter. Yeah. I mean, it's a... It's a metal shed. So it's going to get hot. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's better than nothing. Yeah. All right, you ready? I'm ready. All right, let's get to it. We ran into a little bit of a problem when we were putting these beams together. We put them together wrong so none of the roof panels would line up. And this beam right here, we got to take down and redo it. Basically, this piece has to be on this side, and this beam has to be on that side. In order for all of these little screw holes up here, to line up with the panels, just like on this one right here. They have to line up, all right? So once we put a roof panel up on this side, we're just checking it. 
it didn't line up with these holes so we got to pull this beam down and redo it all right so we got quite a bit of the roof on it's going on pretty good and i'll just say that if you have the beams in the correct orientation everything lines up all right so there's no problems with that whatsoever these ones on the outside edge go in this groove right here so these ones you can tighten down pretty good on the outside edge but all the other ones that go into like the beams and stuff you don't want to tighten those down too much because you'll strip them out which i've done on a couple what do you need i don't know yet let me see okay Okay, you want me to go up there? Yeah. Day four. Where we're at so far is we got all the roof on and then we got the edge pieces going all the way around the roof. We're doing pretty good so far. So the next thing we're gonna be doing or the next thing I'm gonna be doing is putting the doors together and putting those on and I think we're about wrapping it up. So this is where we're at. We're on step 27 and that's where we're gonna continue. All right, so during this, I think there's a step that it misses because there's a screw hole down there that lines up. It never tells you to actually install that. Same for the corners. It never said to put a screw in to hold this down. There's one in the middle, you know, on both sides, but there's nothing that tells me to put those down. So what I'm gonna do is pull off these three screws right here, pull this cap off, and then lightly lift up this ridge that I bent up right there and then put a screw in right down there on both sides, if that makes sense, okay? And then I'm gonna do that again on that side and then I'll put a screw in down there at the bottom to hold this down. I mean, I don't think you need this thing loose unless you need to get rid of like debris. You know, that could be a thing, I don't know. I'm gonna put screws in there anyway. All right, those two screws I was talking about are those two right there. And that holds this rail kind of in place. And then I'll put a screw right down there as well. Boom and done. What do you guys think? We have a brown 10 by eight shed. I would say it looks pretty fan freaking tastic if you ask me. I'll just do a quick little show and tell. Here's the roof, nothing wrong up there. Looking real good. All right, so a few things I still have to do is add an actual ramp so I can get my lawnmower in and out real easy. And then I need to add fill dirt and stuff around the bottom edges so no rodents and bugs and all that kind of stuff can get underneath. Uh, for the front side, uh, the doors line up really good. There is quite a bit of a gap right here in the center, so I might actually add some sort of foam in there for the sideways rain, so that doesn't get in there. But other than that, everything, everything lined up perfectly, really. All right, so we'll go ahead and go on the inside. Here is the lock. I would say it's nothing super strong or anything like that, but it will keep out the honest people. Open this up and you'll see how much stuff I actually have in here. All right, so on the bottom of the other door, we have the locks. You just lift those up and turn them. Same for the top that you can't see. Boom! Look how much stuff I actually got to fit in here. This you're not supposed to see yet because that's coming out in another video. So don't look at that. So if we step inside, I've got two two-stage snow blowers right over here, another one right back there in the corner. I've got a, I think that's at least a 36 inch yard roller. I've got a gorilla cart up on its side. And then over here in the corner, I've got all the shovels, my weed eater and other yard equipment. 
And then right in the center, we've got a 42 inch Craftsman riding lawnmower. And of course the e-bike right here that you're not supposed to see. Look how much stuff you can fit in there. Holy crap, I was not expecting to do that at all. And another cool thing that you can get is some shelves that come with the shed that I guess they go right back there. Of course, I didn't get them, but that is an option. And of course, I just have a little light in here if I need it. But wow, I was not expecting to get that. On the front, I did add a solar motion activated light. And of course, I also added one on the back. Alrighty, well, there you go. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If anybody's looking for a pretty decent 10 by 8 shed, you can get them from Patio Well. Occasionally, they do offer a discount. And of course, I'll have all that information down below. And of course, a big shout out to Patio Well for hooking us up with a 10 by 8 shed. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like that smash button and I will see you on the next one.